I'm Kate and I make junk journals. And today we're gonna make a flip out tip in page with lots of pockets. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is my first day using my dad's studio space all by my little lonesome self. I am so excited. So I brought a bunch of stuff from my house and let's hope that I brought everything I need. So let's get set up here and kind of get comfortable. So here is the amazing desk that my brother-in-law made and watch this, this is really cool. So it's automatic, and I promise to try to not play with it too much while I'm doing tutorials, but it's really fun and so fancy. So we'll see, probably here, I don't know, what's a good desk? It's probably good. And my dad does have some shelves that I could use, but I'm just kind of going with blank no man's land for today. So we'll see if how I feel about that, if I feel like I need a little personality, but maybe I am plenty of personality for this backsplash, so. We'll just keep it as it is for now. All right, so I don't wanna get this beautiful desk, you know, covered in glue, as my work area often tends to get. So I will put down my mat, and I have this little block to have as a workspace, and I can unpack. So let's see what we've got. So I have my cutter, cutting thing, a bunch of tags and cards. The junk journal we're working on, the junk journal that I'm secretly working on, but we're gonna use it as a reference for the template. Ruler, in case I decide to be accurate about something. Fabri-Tac glue, ribbon, my circle cutter, my awl, and then I think this is all just like my cute stuff. My distress ink, some more glue, corner rounder, envelopes just in case, stationary kind of things, writing paper in different variety, got my scoreboard, lots of scrap of paper. That is it, we are officially moved in. Oh, I gotta turn on my overhead camera, and that seems to be working, so that's good. Okay, let's just fast forward this part and I'll get it kind of arranged and cute. Anymore, get set, go! Okay, we are ready to craft. So let me show you the page that I wanna to do today from my junk journal that I made. And I'm not gonna lie, I think it's pretty cool. So let me find it. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this page out. So for this, I used um, just a piece of scrapbook paper and I actually decorated the inside where it's white. And a couple weeks ago, my mother-in-law was here in this very room and we did a vocabulary tutorial where she taught me all kinds of vocabulary words and we kind of have a little glossary of junk journaling. So if you haven't seen that, you should definitely check that out. But one of the words that I used was tippin and maybe you learned that word too. That was totally new to me. And a tippin is just when you wanted to add an extra page to your book and you kind of tape it on or glue it on somehow to where it kind of flaps open but the same way that the book opens and then a fold out would be when you attach a piece of paper and it opens out the opposite way so I wanted to use a tip in and a fold out and I kind of thought it would be fun if I made a page and then you had a tip in and a fold out and they kind of laid on top of each other and I made it and I made it backwards and instead of just flapping them the other way okay let me just show you because this, this is kind of bizarre one I'm definitely gonna modify this for today because it is kind of weird so here is is my little creation. So we have these little two writing spaces. Let's not forget that this one is also a secret pocket. Pretty cool. And then we swivel those out of the way. And then this little flip out also folds down right there. And this folds down. And we have a little pocket here. And then this is a little fold open. That is also a pocket that holds these two little cards off on the side. And then we have this little tip-in that is a card that first folds open that way. And then we fold it open this way. And we've got one more little card sneaky in the back. What do we have here? We have a tip-in, fold-out, swivel-out pocket page. Flip out, fold out. We'll see, we'll work on that. That is a lot of things. These two pieces are actually me trying to fix some problems. So I'm not sure if we're gonna include those today. And then this is the part that I was actually trying to create. I, for some reason, thought that this is how this page should lay. And the day that I did this, I was like really opinionated about it. And I'm like, no, it needs to lay this way. I designed it this way. And the problem with that is, let's pretend these little flappy things don't exist. And this 
is our junk journal, and we open it, it's gonna open really weird because this one needs to be the top one. And then you can open it and it kind of keeps that bottom one tucked and it will open just fine. Now, instead of just folding it that way, like a normal human, I was like, let's add a little rotating writing spot that'll swivel in and then I can stack it my dream way and then this will hold everything in place. And then it kind of did, but it kind of didn't and it kind of slid around. So I was like, I know, instead of just Going back to that original thought of just changing the flip, I'll just add another little weird swinging writing space. So that's what I did. So these two swinging writing spaces are just to hold down my original page so that when I open it, it opens up. So did it work out super great? I don't know. Is it kind of fun and kind of funky? It kind of is. So do we hate it? A piece of me hates it. Do we love it? Yes, huge piece of me loves it. So I think I love it more than I hate it. Um, and I definitely like this concept. And it is kind of like stacky crazy town. And I do like that about that. So whether or not you include these little swivelly things or not is up to you. So let's remake this. And presently, I'm not sure if we're gonna do the flippy out parts or not. Let's just start crafting and see what happens. So here is the journal that we have been working on. It's the cover with the folio fold out. And don't worry, we haven't decorated this yet. This is not gonna be a Cheerios junk journal. It will be so cute and beautiful, I'm sure. And then here are the pages that we've done so far. And I'm gonna wanna choose a white blank page to decorate decorate for this one. Oh, and this is just a paper I did to be the outside of the signature. So maybe we do that. Maybe do the inside right there. And that would be the first page. Let's do that, because then it's easier to work with. Well, basically, that was a long way of saying I'm gonna work with a new piece of paper on the inside, and this will be the inside of our first signature. And as we make this new one, just know you can use any kind of paper and any kind of style, and you don't have to make it just like me. You can use these concepts. You can even use one of these concepts per page, and it's plenty to do. But if you're like me and you like to jam pack a whole bunch of stuff into one page, then you can put it all on one page like me. So we're gonna do it the right way, and we're not going to design it with the card on top. We're gonna design it to look nice with the fold out on top and the tip in underneath. So let's pick out our tip in card and our fold out card. And hopefully, I brought a big enough variety to where I should get something that works nice. Should we use one of these same card things? Just make it easy on myself and not reinvent the wheel. Maybe we should do that. Will that fit? Yeah, it will. This page is a little bit smaller. This original page is seven and a half by six by six. Yeah, seven and a half by six. Oh, and that was to match some envelopes. That's why I did that weird size. And then this one is, yeah, five by seven. So we got our little living our best life card because we are living our best life. So that one's a flat card. So let's pick from, this is our folding out card. And if you don't have a card, you can just fold a piece of scrapbook paper. That's essentially what these are. I really do like how this one has writing space. So if I pick one of these, we're gonna have to add writing space. Oh, I could do that. Although this is kind of a lot for this smaller page. So I'll probably have to trim this down. Let's cover it up and see how we feel. So if this was it cut, I'm totally fine with that. Let's do it. I'm going to cut it to where I think it still looks good. What I want is just to make sure there's at least a quarter of an inch border between that white line and the edge. So I will just eyeball that and see. Even though it's cut off, it still is, you know, bordered in and so it looks pretty decent. If I were to go too close then it would just look clipped off and I wouldn't like it. So, got a card and our other card. And there are lots of different ways that we could put this on. I am going to use ribbon. You could also use washi tape or maybe fabric. Oh, you could use paper even. It doesn't have to be fabric or something soft. I just like the idea of having something flexible because then it's not as stiff and it kind of flops open a little bit better. So I'm gonna grab some ribbon and let's see what I have. This is gonna be a little too thin. I want it something like, what is that, half an inch? Yeah, that's half an inch. And then that way a quarter of an inch will be on the card and then a quarter an inch will be on the paper behind it and it just you know that seems nice and secure oh this is a little thicker i knew what i was doing how come i didn't bring very thick lace so we will either do something a little too thick or not quite thick enough okay let's try lace for one of them and we'll see what that turns into and then for the other one i think i'm going to do one side with ribbon too small so that it can be blue and a little bit cuter Ooh, maybe it will be that color we'll see and then the other side i'm just gonna go ahead and maybe cut this down to be the right size because this is actually not ribbon it is fabric so theoretically if i were to trim a little piece yes perfect so we've got that and that will be good so we'll put that in our little 
pile, scoop these away. So before I start gluing the ribbons on and stuff, I'm going to take my ink, and let's see, I've got speckled egg and tattered rose and weathered wood with me. And because this is a pretty pink page already, I'm gonna contrast that a little bit with either the speckled egg or weathered wood. And because this is my newest one and it's kind of more exciting to use your new stuff, I'm gonna go with speckled egg. So I'm just gonna dab on some of that ink and brush the edges to get a little bit of contrast, some texture. Okay, so now see that just has a little bit more dimension. And we'll do the same thing with this card. Okay, let's put that away. Okay, so let's start with this one. Here, let's give a little, ourselves a little room. So this one, I'm gonna use some of the blue. Let's do the teal. And we'll do the white as well. Ah, string everywhere. So I'm gonna measure this ribbon to be just a little bit shorter than this paper. Snip it somewhere around there. And now I'm gonna take my glue and I'm just gonna draw two lines with it, one on each side. So this little string of glue is gonna grab onto the paper. And then this little string is gonna grab onto our base page behind our little journaling card. And I will just set this where I want. Because this is the outside page, it's going to have a lot of bulk in the middle. So I want maybe even like a half inch away from the center so that this can flip open all the way and not be crowded when I have all my other pages in my signature. And I would go closer to the middle if this was not a card that folded out. So because it's so interactive, I wanna keep it away from that spine to give myself a lot of space to be able to flip things open without it getting awkward and bunched up in the middle. Oh, you know, that's like plenty of space. I don't know why I needed a whole half inch before. I think it was because my first tip in and I just am like, you know, I kind of really get nervous that everything will rip out of my books. That's something you might have learned about me. I don't really underdo much. So as that's drying, let's think about our other card. We're gonna want to put it just a little bit away from this edge. Now you could wrap it around the outside so that the ribbon goes there and there and then it swings open right on the edge. And maybe that's what we should do because of our limited space. Yeah, and that just looks better, right? That looks weird, that looks awesome. So let me grab my fancy little lace and maybe this is really terrible and annoying and it will bleed through the shiny glue. So you can either use matte glue or why don't we do this with lace on top of it? And then that way we don't have to glue the lace on quite so strong because the lace isn't gonna be what's holding it together. And we can just lightly put some glue on the lace and it won't be so shiny and ugly. So let's hold this up and just kind of measure something smaller than the card. And then I'm doing that same thing where I'm going to draw two little lines if this will lay flat. Okay, something like this. Okay, so we're gonna grab this and try to find a little edge to smash it on there. And I'm gonna go a little lower so that we don't interrupt that little title of living our best life too much. I never want to get in the way of living my best life. Okay, so now that that one side's on there, I'm just gonna line that up and just kind of roll it over, try to smooth it down. Mm -hmm. Ooh, maybe I like that. Maybe I don't even need lace. Hmm, let's think about that as that dries. Okay, so now let's do the undersides. So we're gonna flip them open. Is this absolutely necessary? Probably not. Do I over enforce everything and make sure it's nice and strong and isn't gonna fall out? Yeah, I do. So let's do that and make sure these guys aren't going anywhere. So I will use my other color of blue. So I think I'm gonna do the ribbon on this side now, just to give each one a little color. So I'll just measure this to be shorter than that. Something like that. And then let's get more of this little stuff that's really starting to fuzzy up. And we'll just measure a little bit less than that. Ah, it's like a little. Okay. Did that get in the trash? Oh my gosh, this thing will never go away. Okay, so we're gonna take our glue, same thing, two little lines. Okay, let's lay that on there. See if we 
can kind of get that to lay a little bit flat. Squish, squish, squish. All right, and now this side. <laughs> okay, we'll kind of get that so it's kind of centered a little bit over that crease. Okay, I'm gonna let those dry. And do we want to add any lace for extra anything? You know, I think I just wanna add it to the outside of this, just so that this kinda doesn't peel up and then it stays a little bit nicer. And then since it's the outside of our signature, it will look just a little cleaner and a little nicer. So I'm just gonna lightly swirl the edge of this with some glue. And then I'm going to Probably should have cut it first, but I will cut that now. And then I'm just gonna lay that on that little swirly pile. There we go. And then that's just a little cuter and a little less obnoxious of an edge because we do not want an obnoxious edge. Okay, so now we've got these two things that are just kind of flip flapping. Our tip in and our flip out. And so far, looks like when we open it, it's kind of awkward, but this one isn't very heavy, that's why. And trust me, this is gonna get a lot heavier by the time I'm done with it. So what do we have next? What is happening? Oh, these are not part of it. I should put these away. Now let's just swivel this back a little bit. So let's look at our flip out. I keep saying fold out or flip out, which is a flip out. I mean, I, it's the same thing. It's essentially tomato, tomato, but who says tomato? So I think like fold out is probably tomato and flip out is probably tomato. So I'm gonna say tomato. I mean, <laughs> fold out. Flip out, Ugh. So let's stick with flip out. But if I use the term synonymously, then that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have this little card. I have a little card like that. Yay, best day ever? <gasps> it is the best day ever. Oh, look, and it's even the same background color. This is the best day ever. <gasps> Heck yeah. Man, this card just gets cooler and cooler. Wait a second. Living my best life, best day ever. You know what? Whoever's journal this is, they're just gonna have to be an optimist. That's all there is to it. Oh, it'll be on the back side. Look at that. Oh, good. No one will ever have to read those on the same page, so. So I need some sort of writing paper, which I have. Here's my little writing paper stack. What do we want? Oh, all the glorious options. We do need it to be long enough to kind of flip out, which is anything, I think. Nothing too stiff. I kind of like that it has lines. Let's do a lined one. Okay, let's go with this one. Is that long enough? <gasps> the perfect size was meant to be. Are you already wondering if I'm going to cut it or just make it like super folded? Probably gonna cut it. Sorry to disappoint you. Oh, but now I'm imagining you at home just being like, please make it crazier. It's not insane enough. And I'm like, oh, I don't wanna disappoint you. I'm here for you. Let's go crazy. I think I'm just gonna fold that like that perhaps. Then what happens? I'm gonna just, oh, I know what I'll do. I will cut it, I just won't cut it quite as much. So I will line up this back page. Did I forget a pen? Luckily, I there is one somewhere around here. I will be back. <gasps> a pencil. I hardly ever get to have pencils because my kids steal my pencils. They're not really allowed to touch my pens, so they'll stay around, but my pencils disappear. And one of my children might eat all the erasers. So I feel so privileged to have a pencil in working condition. So let's line this up and I will just kind of give it a quarter of an inch-ish border around the edges. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna mark it somewhere like that and we will cut that down. So now we'll line it up again, and this time we will chop the bottom off. Yeah, something a quarter of an inch-ish. And now we have, it's not a ton extra writing space in this one, but at least I've updated a tiny bit. And let's give it a little bit more something by putting some tattered rows around the edges. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Does anyone know what I spend the most time editing for my videos? I have to edit out all my singing. I can't really be quiet. So when I don't say anything, I end up singing. And all the music I sing is copyrighted and I don't really know the rules. I should look into that and see how much I can sing. But then I'll just be singing all the time and never get any work done. Okay, we're going to take this and turn it into a pocket by gluing it here, here, and here on the back side and slap that down. 
keep hunching my shoulders. I need to put them down. My older sister is always pushing my shoulders down because I always am holding them up like that. But maybe it's because this desk is too high. Will that help me? Ah! There we go. I think that's gonna work. Keep gluing. Nope, still hunching my shoulders. I think it's just something I do. Okay, so now that I've got that glued, press that down. Do, do, do. Just like that. Now let's grab our little best day ever card. And that is puffier than that. Is that gonna be annoying to squash all that down? Does it need to do that? No, that's weird. Don't do that. We're gonna keep it like that. What did I do, washi tape? Let's get some washi tape. Washi tape, washi tape. Having a party with washi tape. That is not copyrighted, so. Here's the washi tape that I brought with me, or at least the kinds that are thick enough for this particular job. So I think we're gonna go with pink. Isn't the right choice always pink? Although that's kind of extra thick. Maybe we go with this little flowery stuff right here. Kind of have a lot of flowery theme stuff going on, so let's do it. Oh, don't forget to make it pink. Little tattered rose around the edges. If we're gonna write about the best day ever on this card, should definitely have tattered rose all around it. Okay, and so I'm gonna take this uh, floral washi tape and I'm just going to rip Actually, I'm gonna cut it because that way I want it to be kind of straight. Not like perfect, but better than what I can rip. And then I'm going to just cut it to be a little bit smaller than the card. So somewhere right there. And then I'm gonna take my glue and it's like the same thing that I did with the ribbon. I'm gonna draw two little lines and wrap it around. Washi tape is not very reliable. You can move it around a lot. It's not really intended to be really strong, so we'll just help it out with a little glue. Oh, or I could have used my glue stick and that might have been easier. Okay, so I'm gonna just line kind of the bottom around this card. Just kind of get it on. So I want it to where it's like half of it is sticking off. And then I'm just going to place this where I want it, which is just kind of in the middle of there. And then I can wrap this around and keep it up there. And I think this is actually what made me not want that one to be the top card, is having like two lines bothered me, which is funny because that is way less annoying than this. And I wonder if it's because I'm working on this and now I have the same feeling that I had the first time I was working on that, but now I'm used to that and so it's all good. Or like maybe later I'm gonna be like, yeah, that's totally fine. Just have that be the way it is. But yeah, now I'm starting to understand my past self a little bit. I'm not super loving that. So maybe there's a way we can improve that and maybe I will just adjust to it and maybe it's really fine. Okay, there is gonna be a little bit of gap in between the cards with, and so the washi tape will peek through and that is because, you know, it's folded and it's wrapping around it. So on this one, I did it on both sides. So I could do that again here and that will just, again, extra reinforce. Probably not super necessary, but for me, I guess it is. Oh, let's wait, because then we can actually put it kind of on top of the paper that is going on here. So let's grab some more paper. And I have, last time I used some avocado dye paper, so I will do that again. And this was just a scrap piece, this is a whole paper. I'm gonna keep this um, fairly flat, just because we already kind of bulked this up and we're gonna put that, that, and that, and we still have cards and I need this to close still. So this is kind of where it's easy for me to show restraint because we're getting kind of thick in that area. So I'm going to just fold this in half and then I will just uh, measure this length first before I chop the other way. And, you know, just make sure there's kind of a border around it. About there is good. And now I will just lay it back down and trim the top. Now this is a pocket up here, but it's a pocket where something sticks like way out. So I don't really need to add extra border right there to make room for it. Um, and we'll go just a little bit above the bottom right there. Oh, and we're gonna dust this one with some speckled egg again. So we will put that and glue that here, here, and here to make a pocket. All right, I'll line that up and put that down. Okay, and now I can put that other piece of washi tape on. So again, I'll just cut it to be a little bit smaller. And this time I'm gonna use some glue. Oh, I got the wrong glue. 
I was gonna grab my craft glue, but this is the school glue, which, I mean, it's still glue, it'll stick, but I want you to know that I'm not a child and I don't always use purple glue. I use grown-up craft glue, so you can respect me. Pay no mind to this purple glue stick. I actually like using purple glue sticks just fine, but I do trust the craft glue. You know, it says it's for crafting, so it makes me feel like it's better, but purple glue has never let me down. All right, let's just get that on there and I'm gonna try to kind of line it up right along that bottom edge, kind of like that. There we go. So now we've got flippity flip, flip, flip. So now we need to stuff it full of tags. So I'll try to keep this part quick. Sometimes I overthink the whole tag part. Ooh, this looks fun. This looks like something that I would want on the best day ever. So maybe sticking out that, ooh, we'll see some of it. <gasps> ooh, look at that like painty part. Is that what we want? Oh yeah, that is living my best life for sure. I'm gonna round the corners just cause we haven't really gotten to see the little corner around her yet. And a card always looks more finished when it has rounded edges. Otherwise it just looks like scrapbook paper. And well, yes, technically it is just scrapbook paper. Now it looks like scrapbook paper cut on purpose instead of just a random scrap. So let's shove that back. We're gonna grab one more, cause that's what I did before. Hmm, little rose stuff. Is that too blendy? Maybe if that is down there. Oh, and that's up there. And then we can even cover the orange. That would be so perfect. I just want you to know if you love orange, we can still be friends. I have a sister-in-law who's obsessed with orange. She's pretty cool. So if she can be cool and like orange, then so can you. Everyone can't be born with good taste, so. Okay, so let's see, we got Oh yeah, we need to put something in there as well. We have something long and skinny already. I'm just gonna have to cut. Oh, what did I use for this? <laughs> did I bring a tab? I did hustle. We are not hustling on our best day ever. But we can have flowers on our best day ever. Let's take a little piece out of this because that is exciting. Okay, so let's see how thin we need this piece. Is this about what we want? We can go a little bigger than this. So if that's that, we'll just kind of do it a little bit bigger and see if that works. Okay, that's too big. I was a little too optimistic with that, but that's okay. I can always trim it down a little. That will work perfect. Let's actually fold this in half and turn it into a little long, skinny, weird card thing. Okay, so this is what, like seven-ish inches? So three and a half-ish. Was that? Nope, that was wrong. Let's cut that down so that nobody knows how bad I was at measuring that. Now we can either put this on the top and then it like opens and then shoves in or yeah, that's what we're gonna do. There's pretty much no other option. This would not really go on the other end. So we're gonna do that before we're gonna do it. We're gonna make a speckled egg, get a little ink. And this is a speckled print, speckled egg. So perfect. All right, now these just have little stickers on them, so I'll just peel off the elusive little plastic pieces that I can never quick it. Aha, yes. And we're gonna put it on the less busy side. That's what my heart is telling me. Smash it down, smash it down. And that can go in there. Wait, I'm actually gonna turn it around so that we can see that border a little bit better. There we go, that looks better. Best day ever. I'll probably go through and embellish things. And so, you know, maybe we'll put a stamp there, put a little lace trim there, put a little collage cuteness somewhere. You know, there's all kinds of little things we could do. Oh, look, look what I did before. I just did two little pieces and put a gap. Did you want on that side too? No, long one, two little short ones. There's another idea. I wish I knew about that when I did this. Okay, get back on track. This is pretty straightforward. I just embellished a tiny bit in there. Then I put a round thing in a pocket. I didn't bring a round thing today. So we'll do a rectangle thing, a pocket. This seems kind of perfect for something like that. And then we'll just get a little tag behind it. Maybe just one of these little cute tags. Okay, so this looks like it needs a little speckled egg. And let's do that one pink, just so that little bit of variety going on. So I'm going to make a little tuck by gluing two sides here and here. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna put that in the corner with just a tiny bit of a border. And then let's put a little ribbon in there so this looks a little more finished. This is cute, I like this. Loop two ends through. Let's cut that. And then I will pull the two ends through this. That way those stick up like that. But those might be too big. Let's just calm those down a little bit. Perfect. And is that all we did for this one? Oh, I guess I could put something there. Fine, I'll embellish if I must. I actually love embellishing, just not so much in front of you. I think I like to spend a lot of like creative quiet time when I do the embellishing part. Butterfly, it's always my go-to. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna do, let's keep it in a little group of three and do some music washi tape dragonfly. <gasps> Please love me. Please love me. What song is this? Who knows? I think I'm gonna purple glue it up. Get that on there. Okay, so I'm gonna just smash that on the top. Okay, maybe just right through the music? I don't know, that seems a little, maybe right below that. Is that weird? Nothing a little dragonfly can't fix. Isn't that weird? I feel like I should be leading out, not in though. Oh, should I fly down? No, that's a terrible idea. We're just gonna go with that. Not my best work, but not my worst work either. Okay, <gasps> did we do it? Well, we did it if you don't wanna add little swinging writing things. We didn't leave much room for one. Can I even do this? Let's test this out. Get a little test drive. Put my little book together, pretend like this is how it is. And then we're like, oh, let's open this page. There'll be other pages in between. In fact, let's decide right now that a little piece of avocado paper is going right here. And I will cut this down to the right size. But I don't know why it bothers me to have two heavily decorated pages next to each other. We're gonna go, oh, we opened this up. Oh, and that's not bad at all. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. And I think that is way good enough. Let me tell you what I did do for those other little flippy doodahs. If your page is a little bit bigger or is missing something, or if you ever wanna add something to solve another problem. So all I did was take um, a little piece and then put it where I wanted it. And I took my awl and I stabbed through both of the layers. Then I grab a brad and I would just stick it there. And I would just wanna make sure that I stuck it high enough to where when it rotated, that the top side wouldn't be clasping over it. Cause if I put it on right here, it doesn't matter how I spin it, it's clasping. So I just have to make sure that wherever I do it, that's why I did it in like the corner here is because I didn't want to interfere anywhere else. And that was where I had the most room to swivel. And that's why they're kind of in weird places. Anyway, so that's how I put a swiveling thing on and you can put it, you know, as big or small as you wanted. For this one though, to turn it into a pocket, all I did was glue a different piece of scrap paper on the back of it and glued it on um, creating a pocket. And then I put that little folded piece of paper in there. So I did that before I put it on. Just a little fun, extra little sneaky layer. And this page is still super fun and a little less ridiculous. So should we do a last grand final flip through? So we open this up and we've got that pocket with two cards right there. We've got this little pocket right here and we've got Little flippy flaps everywhere. Lots of little writing space. And then for this one, you can open it up there as well. That's kind of fun and interactive and I kind of love it. So there you go. Little tip in flip out. We can't say swivel out anymore. So I guess it just turned into our tip in flip out page with lots of pockets. So thanks for crafting with me. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you make anything inspired by any of my tutorials, I would love to see it. You can either tag me on Instagram at, at Kate's Junk Journals or you can send me an email. You can email pictures or video to katesjunkjournals at gmail.com. And if you do, I might even feature them on a video just like I'm doing with these cool people right now on this video. And I can't even tell you how cool it is every time I see somebody's work that was inspired by my tutorials, it feels so cool. It's like there's actual fruits from all my labors. And sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, 
That's so much better than mine. I love it so much. So it's cool to see a lot of innovation and different styles. And whether they're followed step by step or some sort of variation, it's all fun to see. And I love hearing from you guys and connecting with you guys. So thank you so much for tagging me and emailing me. It means a lot to me. Man, there are a lot of these. So I should probably talk about something else so I can keep showing them. Or maybe we can just sit in silence and enjoy the beautiful artwork. Well, thanks again, and keep them coming, and I would love to see yours if you haven't sent them to me. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next week.